So hello and welcome to FM24. Yep, today I'm here to give you a quick A to Z guide to FM24, including some of the new features, some beginner basics, and just a few things to keep an eye on. So for A, we have an intro. Yes, I've copped out this early. However, it is worth going straight back to the beginning. But hi, I'm James, and I've been semi-creating content for two years and playing Football Manager for a fair few more. Um, this is my channel, Iron Owl, born from a combination of Sheffield Wednesday and Scunthorpe United's nicknames, which is why I don't talk about real football at the moment. Uh, but my channel involves a combination of tips, tricks and experiments to help you get better at the game and maybe discover stuff that you never knew. But for now, on to B, which is... Beta. Now I know Sports Interactive have asked us all to use early access when putting this onto social media, and I will be using early access as my hashtag just to try and please them. However, the community have always known it as a beta and it's in the bottom left corner. But essentially, it is an early version of the game where if you've pre-ordered this from a Sega approved supplier, you are gonna be able to play the game now as I speak in the two weeks prior to the release date on November the 6th. Moving on to C, which is choosing a club. So this year, you've got a bit of a slight difference where you can actually port saves over from FM23. However, I am going to be doing a new save start just so that you can see how the process works. And again, to aim for a lot of newcomers. And because this is an A to Z guide, I'm going to be using AZ Alkmaar, if you haven't seen the reference in the thumbnail. But this year, things are slightly different when it comes to setting it up, which is going to lead me straight on to D, which is the database options. Now, things have slightly changed this year, where FM have given you three options at the beginning of a game. You can either go for original mode, which is the same as it always used to be, where the updated squads are active from the beginning of your save whenever you put it, or you can do real world where FM will track the transfers that happen in real life up to the point that you've started the game and simulate it so that they happen in the game. Or you have your world where it takes the start date of your save, takes the squads as they were on that date and lets you rewrite history. Now for this A to Z, I'm going to stick to the original mode for now, just because it's what most people are probably going to select and be used to, albeit I am going to be using real world, and I can see for experiments the your world is going to be very interesting. However, here we are on the advanced options screen, which is a very important screen when it comes to setting up your database. So here we select which leagues are going to be active in the game, and obviously the more leagues you have active, the more data the game has to churn through, so the slower your save gets over time. However, the more players you have loaded and the more people you have to scout. So it is useful to have a good database size. Now, in the top right corner, you'll see a database size. This is basically how many players are gonna be in the database as a whole, excluding the ones you have for league set. Now, if your computer can handle it, the larger the better. And there will be videos coming out soon from me and I imagine a million other creators about how to optimize these setups depending on what you want. For now, I'm just going to pick a large database. I'm going to get rid of England and Spain, but I will keep Germany, Belgium, and of course the league I'm playing in, which is Holland. So, original game mode, you can select your date through here, so you can decide whether you want to be the early preseason, the late preseason, or just get to the point where the games are starting. And then there are a few options down at the bottom here, which I will go through by discussing my E, which is the editor. Now the editor won't be available until the full game comes out on November 6th. However, the pre-game editor allows you to add leagues, change setups, and do a whole host of cool things. And that is free and is a download from the Steam Workshop and gives you a whole host of opportunities. However, what sometimes happens is these new teams that you can put into the game don't have any active players to choose. So there are options down here to add key staff and players to those teams, which will hopefully make it a lot more immersive as an experience, even if the player names aren't exactly the real ones. If you work, play for your Sunday League team in Tier 13, then sorry, the game probably still doesn't know you. One other thing that 
will happen come game release date is usually SI provide an in-game editor available for purchase. Now, the price has been going up every year and to the point where I actually don't think it's worth it anymore. However, if you want to be able to change the game mid-save or have that fallback in case of bug errors or just generally want to cheat your way to victory, you can actually buy the in-game editor, which will allow you to you know, move teams, move managers and do all sorts, really. However, in content creation land, it's massively frowned upon purely because it's all it's seen as a possibility of cheating so there is a button down here which allows you to turn it off so even if you own it it'll never show up on your toolbar which avoids a lot of angry comments but as for this save I, it's not going to be available yet so that doesn't matter i am going to say i'm quite happy with this setup and i'm going to start the game so it'll just ask you to start the game and then it will do its initial save run f is for face and appearance so now that we've got the game set up, it's time to set up your manager. You should in theory only have to do this once, but you can create as many different managers as you want if you want different setups. So I have my manager set up here from the beginning. However, I'm gonna do a new profile just so that you can follow along with me. So I'm just gonna quickly fill out this first page and then come right back. And in case anyone's thinking of doxing me, no, none of these stats are true. Um, however, one thing that I do need to make you aware of down here is this experience level. Now, if you are brand new to the game, I would keep this ticked. However, if you are not new to the game and you've done things before, you can actually click the little tick and it provides you with the ability to choose your style and formation of choice. I leave it blank because I usually like to see my team before I decide my formation. I'm quite adaptable. Another thing you can do is set your staff responsibilities before you enter the game so that they default to your manager this way. I am going to talk about that later in the video. So for now, I'm just going to leave everything activated. Um, so we now move on to the body. And when I say face and appearance, you can choose your ethnicity, choose your height, choose your weight. As you can see, I'm rather more rotund than most. So I need to set my size. And now we have an awful lot more customization. You can change the hairstyle. You can change the facial structure facial hair you now have skin details which is new this year so there are blemishes spots all sorts the options are limited but i'll take that was close enough then we go on to your attire now this can be quite interesting because if you see yourself as a suit and tie manager do you see yourself as a jacket manager are you an absolute tracksuit manager you can be all sorts of things i tend to like being the two-tone tracksuit guy just because well i like being comfortable now you can actually choose to use the club color as your default color, which I think is pretty cool to be fair. So I'm gonna have red for AZ Altmar, but set as club. So if you ever move, your suit, your um, attire color changes with it, which is really cool. Um, the highlight on this, I'm gonna have as black because AZ's logo is black, white, and red, if I remember right. And then black for everything else. You then have the new feature, which is ability aids. So you can actually add an eye patch or you can add a hearing aid. I'm just gonna leave mine blank, but I'm sure plenty of people are gonna be having fun with those. I don't wear glasses or fancy face paint or adding a watch, earring or ring because they do absolutely nothing for the game and you never see them in your life apart from this page. So let's just skip over that. And now to the important bit, which is your attributes. Now, again, if you're new to the game, I suggest you just click these dots, which essentially sets them to be what is suitable for the club that you've selected however if you don't want to and you want to put yourself right at the very start with absolutely nothing you can select it to blank and sunday league footballer which is the lowest it will go you will have very little to play with or you can just make yourself an absolute superstar legend and put them on maximum you've then got this slider here which allows you to decide whether you're more mental or coaching based now on the fact that we've got a decent team and we can hire coaches i'm going to head towards the mental side again i'm going to get back to suggested and i'm going to keep the defaults but if you want to change them you can just move this down and move these up you know follow the dots there'll be a few guides as to you know what is the best setup for this but for now i'm just going to stick with pretty much the default behind that little change i've made hit confirm and we start playing so g i have called game start 
which I've considered as this screen here, which is essentially the boardroom scene at the beginning of your save. Now, it provides a little bit of breaking news analysis and history of your club and your preferred formation, etc. The goals for the save. However, the main bit I'm going to refer to is this section here, because this is where you actually need to do something. The other bits are good to read, especially if you're a newcomer, but if you're an experienced player, you've probably seen it all before. However, these three questions can have a little bit of a bearing on your save very early on. Scheduling a press conference. Now, press conferences are annoying, but they do change the dynamics, both of staff, players, and the media. So if you want to get people on site early, then I would do the press conference. If you intend to just be completely shy away from the media all the time, you can just select no. I intend to find myself doing the very first one, which is this one, to keep the media on side, and then leaving everything to my assistant until we make continental competitions, and then keeping up appearances just in case it makes a difference. In my experience, it really doesn't. However, why take the chance? An inter-squad friendly, allowing you to assess the differences between the squads, sort of means an A team versus B team situation, which I always select as no, because I'd rather the friendlies be against other teams. And then arranging a meeting with the backroom staff, I like to make this as infrequent as possible, and there is an option to put never once you've had the first one. However, if you're a new player and trying to learn bits of the game, the backroom staff meeting is actually really useful in terms of letting you see what you need to worry about and what you don't and basically they will give you their suggestions and if you really you know can't be bothered to dive into the game or you'd want to leave that you know as minimal admin as possible you can just go with along with what they say essentially so if this comes with like staff hires uh, player interactions and a bunch of other things so with that i'm going to hit confirm and then we save the game so h i've got as the home page which you may notice mine will look different to yours because I've already got a skin attached, which I will go into later on. It's one of the other letters. However, it is basically a dashboard for your club, but equally for you as well. So you can access your profile, you can access your contract details, you can access promises and targets that you've set to your players. Targets are a new thing this year where I haven't yet experienced them, but essentially you can tell players to either book up their ideas in training and set them a target, or if they go on loan, set them a goal target and say that, oh, you can have your squad sets increased if you reach this amount, which is really good as well. You'll get your history and your relationships as you go along, but essentially it's a quick little guide to the page. However, I'm going to move on next to I, which is the place you're going to spend a lot of your time in this game, which is your inbox. Now, the inbox works very much like a normal email system. However, it's where an awful lot of the game data gets pushed to you and where you have to make a lot of decisions. So as I move across here, you've got news articles, you've got information about the club, you've got expectations and visions. So I'm just going to auto accept this because they very rarely budge. Um, you get information on players on the last year of their contract at the very beginning of the save. So these are people whose contracts will expire at the end of the year. So it gives you advice as to whether you ought to be signing them again or not and a selection of options. You can ask the director of football to do things like this for you, but it has to come from an instruction from you in this case. Then we've got the tactical direction, which I'll come back to in a minute. But all the way through your save, you will come back to here. This will almost be your homepage, essentially, where all of your information will come in. It's where you'll confirm transfers. It's where you'll see results and signings and draws. And it's basically the home hub for everything. J is for job allocation. So if you've decided that being new to the game, you don't want to do everything on the game, or likewise you are used to the game and you know what bits you do not like doing, essentially there is an option, which I showed you briefly earlier, where you can actually choose what you are and aren't responsible for, which is a great way of determining the difficulty level, but equally how much you want to get involved in your save. So. The options go between, you know, your staff hiring and firing and contracts, who provides your advice, which has been nicely changed this year. So, again, for those who are used to more detail, you can actually choose where and when and who provides information when it comes to transfers, um, staff requirements, etc. 
Um, your scouting, you can choose whether you want to assign scouts or whether you want to leave it to other people. Transfers and contracts is a big one because if you want to be the director of football or if you want to have full control over transfers across the whole team, you keep this as you, but you can delegate them. You can either delegate all of these by setting it to a staff member or a recommended member. Um, you can ask just the youth teams. You can do it out as much as you want. You also this year have the transfer room. So this section here allows you to set the defaults when it comes to loans and transfers out. You then have what I mentioned earlier about media. So I am personally going to delegate all of these to a staff member, apart from Continental Cup competitions, because it's a way of at least doing something so that the media rating is not zero. Again, I don't think it matters. Training is an interesting one because some people absolutely love it and think it's critical to the game. Some people hate it and will just leave it to the game because it's so time consuming. And some people are in the middle. I am in the middle. I like to delegate the actual training, but lead the individual training on every player in the team, which means that I have control over what position they are learning so that it matches my formation. And equally, I can train them in specific items to make them better for said roles. Tactics, again, you can get advice from certain people when it comes to opposition instructions. Then the match, you can decide whether you even take control of the match or whether you leave it to your assistant. If you've seen people doing saves where they are the director of football, they can set this and everything to be the assistant. So the assistant becomes the manager and then you are effectively the director of football. I personally like to have myself in control of everything for the first team, but leave the youth teams to everybody else. Now this includes friendly matches, which a lot of people will turn off. However, on skins such as this one, which is SAS24, which I'll come to later and is amazing, but most of the skins that are available out there will have what is an instant result button, which again I will touch on later, but that means that you can actually do all of the setup for the friendly and then not actually have to play it and sit through the whole match, which is a win in my books. And finally, new for this year, we have set pieces. Now you can delegate this to a staff member or control it yourself. And that leads me nicely on to K, which is kick takers. Again, slight cop out, I admit, but I had to crowbar things in in a reasonably logical order. So when it comes to kick takers, I'm just going to go quickly into tactics and set pieces. So this has massively changed this year, and you can actually control your set pieces in a much more dynamic way. You can choose to have a coach look after it, or you can look after it yourself. And for the moment, I like to consider using this wizard at the beginning and taking control yourself on an outline basis and then basically using suggestions from your assistant. A lot of teams will not have set piece coaches at the beginning, but if you develop into a team that does or you find yourself at a team that already does, then maybe using them could be a good idea. However, set pieces can be quite an important way to get goals, obviously. It's where you can really stamp your authority on the game. So I am going to go through this wizard with you. So defensive marking strategy, I prefer a hybrid one versus player or zonal. So picks the best for the scenario. Marking a post, I would like to cover the near post. Uh, in terms of who to leave forward, I want a bit of a balanced approach. I don't want to be too attacking, but I don't want to be over defensive. Um, now, onto the attacking ones. Where would I like the ball to be delivered? My staff preference is central. However, I prefer the far post because you can either have a shot on goal or you can flick it back across the box to someone on the near post. Uh, in terms of players to leave back, again, I'm going to go balanced, even though on a good team, I may set that to attacking and have more forward. In terms of swinging in or swinging out, I'm going to go for the in-swinger, because, again, the header at the far post into the far corner or back across goal into someone in the middle are also going to be there. And then you'll be greeted with this screen. So it may look daunting at first. It certainly was to me. But essentially, it provides you with what your wizard entries have effectively come up with. So you've got a various set of instructions and you can essentially have a list of players for each type of position. You can set your priority of players based on their stats for each you know position type, so to speak. So a defender that's aerial, a defender that tracks the runners, 
and then the counter attack is to people going forward and you can set which one is your most important so if a player was number one in each of these categories you can actually choose which one they go to by using the priority list so you can have that for defenders and you can have it for attackers depending on the scenario and it allows you to choose your corner takers now the ai will have done all of this for you at the very beginning which i think is great and my thoughts are just watch a few matches with it and just adjust as you go along tinker until you're happy with it so for now i'm going to leave this just as it is ellis for lineup which I should have really picked T for tactics, but I'm not waiting all the way until T. I've got to try and keep an order here. But if you click on your tactics button, you'll get brought to this screen. Now in your email inbox, you will have been asked for your tactical direction. So that is through this wizard, which I've just accessed a different way, essentially. And the thumbs up are formations that the game suggests would work well based on your current squad. Now. I'm just going to stick with that. The default formations that it gives you are actually really good as a start point as a newcomer, and tweaking them as you go on to make them better is part of the game. So I'm going to stick with, oh look, game press 4231. Any experienced FM player will know that that has been the meta for years and is a very effective formation. However, it's nice to be able to tinker it as you go along. Now, up in this top corner, there are two buttons, selection advice and quick pick. Selection advice essentially will have a staff member decide who should claim each position. Usually your assistant, but you can delegate to elsewhere. Quick pick will just basically pick the best player in the position, give or take, regardless of form, quality, tiredness, anything like that. So the two are slightly different, as I'm going to prove here by my assistant suggesting that four players he would be different to that quick pick. Some of them mainly moved around more than anything. But what you can see on this screen, again, mine will be slightly different because I am using a skin, which I will talk about later on. However, you can see the players in their positions. If you click this analysis button, you will see what areas of the pitch you are strong, so dark green, and weak, which is dark red. And you can move players around. So for example, if I move this position to be a support rather than attack, that now has three players responsible and makes it slightly lighter in color. It gives you data here on their current ability and potential. Don't always believe the stars, but they're usually a pretty decent guide. And you can see on the pitch, you've got your various positions with little descriptors as to what they all do. You will also see your instructions tabs, which can give you a bit more guidance on how your players will behave in the match engine. Sometimes it's worth just letting the matches run early on and then tweak them as you see things, because you can tweak these in-game, which is something that we'll look to do in this save. However, for now, I'm going to move on a few days and teach you a few other aspects of the game, because this is one that you will essentially be tweaking forever. M is for meetings, and one of the first things you're going to be asked to do is to join in the monthly staff meeting. Now, as I mentioned before, down in the bottom right corner, which you won't be able to see because my head's in the way, you actually have the option to set this to never. So I have done that, but if you're new, I would advise leaving it as every month possibly, or every week if you feel really brave. Um, but this will actually give you some contextual advice as to what to do. So for example, it's telling me to put Matt Ryan as captain and a few of the individual player training. So I usually just spam the accept button really. Um, sending people on language courses, kind of standard for the course. And um, again, take time to read a few of these if you can. And I'm just going to skip through. That's one of the more easy meetings. What you will have coming up in a few days time is going to be a meeting with the players, which is where you set objectives. Now, the meeting stage here is important because it can introduce you to promises. So promises are a way that you can say to a player, look, I'm going to do this. And it's a way of sort of getting them on side if they're unhappy, but equally it's a way of getting them to absolutely hate you if you don't do them. So, for example, here it is. Introduce yourself to the squad. You'll see the squad dynamics introduction. So you introduce yourself to the squad. So 
you're going to follow it, all of the meetings, press conferences, and run on a very similar basis around here, where you have answers that are either neutral, convincing, positive. Usually, the further left you are, the more positive you are. The further right you are, the more negative you are. You can choose how you want to be as a manager. If you want to just permanently please players, you tend to pick the second option to the left, which, when it's in a box of four like this, is actually the middle top. So it's the second one along. However, in this case, this is actually a new part of the intro function, which is it lets you decide what you want to talk about in terms of aims. So for a start, I am going to pick some promises for the Eredivisie going into the season. I think we're good enough to qualify for the Europa League. They're happy with that. The Europa Conference League, I am going to look to reach the knockout stages because I am ambitious like that. And I finalised the code of conduct and they are all happy about that. I'm not going to talk about anything else because you can make promises about youth recruitment, about selling players, about training courses. I don't like risking all of that because it gives them a chance to be unhappy with you. But as you can see at the end, everyone's pretty darn happy with what I've had to say and we've had a big morale boost, which people will say it has no effect on the game. I personally think it does, just not a very big one. However, it is worth keeping an eye on, which, again, I'm going to touch on in a later letter. And when it comes to media interaction, so I'm going to attend the intro press conference that it says in that game start section, I am going to do what I said I was going to do, which is spam the second option, which is happy, but not so over-happy that I am saying outlandishly stupid things, like saying that I prefer my nine-rated striker to Erling Haaland, You'll see little things like that which don't make quite so much sense. However, I'm just going to show you can absolutely spam the second button effectively and usually get a decent result. Now, obviously, I've upset somebody because they want to be a negative Nancy there in the media. However, over time, just the fact that you're talking to them usually gets most of them on side anyway. The media have a lot less influence in reality unless you're at a club that's heavily media biased, but... We don't need to worry about that in this game. N is for new features. And I've already mentioned about the set pieces, but we also have the J League that's been introduced to the game. And there's a new position called an inverted fullback, which allows a defender to effectively come into the middle if you're potentially having wide centre-backs or a few other different creative characteristics in your team to move players forward. So it works very well with the libero, for example. I'm not going to go too much into detail on that today. However, the AI's had a lot of improvements when it comes to the transfer decisions and the squad building. And the game match engine, which you're going to see in a bit, has also seen a raft of improvements ahead of 2025, where they're going to have a new game engine from Unity, which means the game is going to take a dramatic step forward. However, compared to FN23, FN24 has so far looked like a marked improvement. O is for opposition instructions. There is a button in your tactics screen which allows you to determine what you're going to do with your opposition. So you can choose your marking, your trigger pressing, your tackling. I always just ask the assistant and the assistant will just give some advice as to what may be advisable based on their scouting. You'll get new screens nowadays as well with match preparation which will help you you know get advice against the specific opponent and one thing that has changed this year is there used to be a pop-up that would give you advice from your assistant now you actually kind of have to go through each section so again that ask assistant button here has come up for opposition instructions and again it's changed uh, but your advice now comes in this little pop-up with the speech bubble so it's worth keeping an eye out on a few of these things up here's the instant result button i mentioned however i'm going to play this match because well i want to show you the match engine so p of course stands for play so let's play a match shall we i'm going to stick with just the defaults of what it's told me much like you know a new player really should It'll give you a little bit of briefing feedback, and then you go to match. You then come to the dressing room scene, where your job is to pump up your players as much as you can, make them all nice and green and happy. Well, at least I've got two people happy. So, you go into the match preview, and we are going to kick off. So one of the first things you will need to do, and I'm going to pause here, is 
up in this top corner you can choose how your screen is set up for this and how many repos you get so most people myself included will just put it on key highlights so it will not take too long to get through each game but still has more than just the goals there is only commentary is the only level below that where you see absolutely no highlights which is kind of pointless really you might as well insta result so i'm going to stick it to key highlights now i'm going to go for tv view with the lowest camera height and the maximum zoom i'm going to keep music and sounds off for now because they're not always fantastic let's be honest and sometimes can slow your screen down um replays I'm going to keep it as the defaults, but you can change them up in this corner. You can change what camera is used as well, and then hit the play button. So you're now in the game. Again, Saz has done a fantastic job with the skin. So yours might look slightly different, but it will have the same information available to you. It just might look different. So, for example, uh, if I go to the tactics board, you can actually change your players. You can change your set piece takers and so on. I'm just going to cancel out of that. You can change your opposition instructions as you go along. You can change... Well, you, there is a shortcut to making subs. One other thing that's awesome about this skin is the tablet. So the touchline tablet, as it's called, gives you sort of data as you go along. It can give you advice, can tell you where things are going well and badly, it gives you player ratings, gives you formations. It's fantastic and it's customizable. Different skins will have different ways of doing this. The default is only two by two, so it is a much smaller space. However, it is something that you can just unlock and has endless potential. So one thing I am gonna do ahead of the next time is hit encourage to try and give them a shout, to try and you know, force the players on a bit. Then Bosch aren't a bad team, but they're not excellent. We should be beating them. Uh, we seem to have killed that guy. That's a shame. Um, so Sugawara coming up the right-hand side. Oh, sorry, his name's in yellow because he's on a yellow card. Oh! <laughs> so the first goal I'm ever going to show you on FN24 is an absolutely terrible own goal by Luke Gambetti. Oh. <laughs> absolutely brilliant. So, yes. Um, own goals are a thing. They can happen, and they do. I can't believe that's actually happened. Anyway, we will carry on and see if we can score any ourselves rather than letting the opposition do it for us. One thing I suppose also to note down the bottom, the green circles around the outside, or what are currently green circles around the outside, is the player's current fitness level. It's sort of their fatigue and natural fitness as they've been playing. The red one in the inside, which is only red at the moment, is their match sharpness. Because this is pre-season, they are all trying to gain match sharpness because they have been on their holidays for a while. So this is a way of doing it. The numbers, you know, the 6.6 .6 7.3 down the bottom are their actual player ratings. So this is how well they are doing in the game. Oh, Barada. Oh, it's gone white. Um, so again, you can see how they're going on. And the little smiley faces here are the mood they're in which i'm assuming they're all effectively either composed at the moment the red was because they were getting complacent because well they've just had a goal scored for them essentially um there's my back post cross i was talking about and then the second recycled second ball that came in but again we weren't able to do anything with it but you can see how those little changes have actually made a difference oh there we go lado has scored and made it 2-0 it was eventually from the set piece that we scored, but it was a very long recycle. But as we see from the replay, Jordi Clarty picks it up in the midfield, one through ball to Lado, and Lado puts it in the far corner for 2 0. Lovely. I'm going to let the game play out a little bit, so I'll come back at the end. I'll show you some highlights if there's any absolute belters. Oh, look, there's the replay for a tight offside, but clearly on. It's 2 0. I've shown you about everything you can. The graphics, as you can see, are much more, you know, much better rounded. The players look a lot heavier. The grass looks nicer. The lighting seems better. It just the whole feel of the game is much better than previous years. Again, if you're a newcomer, you won't have a clue because you'll have never played them. However, I can tell you, it's never going to be FIFA or EA Sports, whatever it is nowadays. But that's not the point this is a lot more to do with the workings behind it but 
the match only is getting better and I'm looking forward to seeing it in Unity next year. I think that's going to be great. As we can see, clearly I didn't injure the guy enough, but it's 2-1 now, so let's hope I don't throw this one away. Um, I mean, we're nearly at half-time, so I might as well show you the half-time menu. Uh, I will skip the replay because it's theirs. Um, and we are going to reach half-time at 2-1 up. So, again, you'll get an analysis screen, much like this, and you can see that we are dominating them, like, horrifically dominating them. So, I'm going to put my fist and say this is why we do the preseason. I'm going to try and make sure that people aren't complacent, but they are happy. Everyone has their own preferences here. Just trial a few out and see what you like doing, really. Um, give them a read the first few times and then sort of learn which ones you want to spam. Uh, what I will do at this point is make a substitution. So I've shown you before, I tend to pause the game when I'm doing this because you don't want gameplay in the background suddenly we score. Uh, so looking at people's condition, Again, it's two different systems. Some of them use the hearts, some of them use the circles. So I have the hearts in this section. Lado has scored, but he's kind of tired. I'm almost reluctant to take him off there. Pavli this has had a 6.5 rating, which is not very good. So I'm going to take him off and bring on Sadiq. Because when I was trialing this game a few times, he was a very good player. So I'm going to go for that. And Devitt, I'm going to replace with Martin Zindi. And I'm going to hit confirm subs and let the game play on. And we've conceded. That's not great. So it's now 2 2. Um, yeah, they had a set piece routine that we were not ready for. And then Matt Ryan has to do better. Um, I'm going to change the instructions slightly so that we attack a bit wider because they're a bit narrower. Work the ball into the box see if that makes anything. I'm going to give some encouragement. I'm going to set it to attacking mentality. All these you can just do in the bottom corner, which is great. Ibrahim to Martins in the Baroda. This is quite nice. Is he going to get a pen? Yes, he is. It's a penalty. So, again, you'll have the option to change the penalty taker, but I'm going to let Brederoda... I've been saying his name wrong, haven't I? Brederoda take the penalty. He earns it. He takes it. He scores it. 3-2 up. Now that we're leading, I'm going to show you another little feature, which is really cool. Saz has put some amazing work into this skin, and there are other skinners out there as well that are fantastic. His is available in Second Yellow Card's Discord server, and there'll be a link in my video as well down below, below the like button. But one thing that you can do, if you click the little arrow down here, this is all for being able to rewind footage, so you can actually go to previous highlights, rewind 10 seconds, you can you know, hit record buttons. However, there's this nice little whistle button here. So you, show, you know at the beginning, I showed you the Insta result button in the tactics screen just before we started the match. That essentially means you don't have to play the match at all in the match engine. You just, the AI, the computer, the game does it for you and just bases the result off what it's fed. You can actually do that mid game and say, I want the game to sim the rest of it and come up with the result. So I'm gonna do that just to save you some time and show you how it works. And we end up drawing 3-3. Three, three. So, yes, you could see how that game was going, and really it should not have been 3-3, three, three, but, you know, there is an element of if you're not in control of the game, then you can't control the outcome, so to speak. That's a terrible way of putting it, but it is there as an option. But be warned it can sometimes go against you when doing that. If you think you're expected to dominate and win and you just don't fancy the hassle, or it's a friendly way you just want to learn stuff with the results, or basically just get players match fitness up and you don't care about the result, it's a really useful function. And if you're doing building a nation saves that are 20 years long, like I've done the last two years, maybe it's a worthwhile thing to be trying to use. But for now, 3-3 in our first game, it'll do, it'll have to, it's pre-season. R is for recruitment. Now, I imagine a lot of people here know my channel exists due to the recruitment focus video I did for FM23. And there will be a new one coming out for FM24 as I learn a few new things. And there is a possibility there might be a collaboration coming up with a good friend of mine. So stay tuned for that. 
However, if you go into scouting, you will see a list of players that your scouts have come up with as suggestions. You can look in the players in range and narrow it down by what positions you want. You can set recruitment focuses, which I will do in a separate video. You can check your scouting coverage and assignments and set your shortlists. Recruitment is a massive part of the game and in many respects is the most fun part of the game. So I am going to cover this in its own video. So keep an eye out for that. However, one thing I did want to introduce this year is the new intermediaries function. So for example, Hobie Verholst here, I'm going to right click, go on transfer and I can ask his agent about the market interest but he doesn't want to leave and the scout doesn't really, well the agent doesn't want to help me. So what you can do as I go through the new function, which you know you probably ought to read that. However, what you can do is hire an intermediary. So if the player doesn't want to leave, the agent doesn't want to help, and if you offer them out and don't get much of a bite, you can hire an intermediary. And what they do, essentially for a cut of the transfer fee, they can help scout the player out and get them sold to another club. Now, the fee depends on how good they are and how well connected they are. How worldwide they are usually is what determines it. And then they give you an idea of what they think they're going to get for the player. So I'm going to pick the second guy because I'll take anything really. It's a new feature of the game that could be very interesting as we go forward. And here we are two days later and Calgary have come in with an offer of 1.2 million for him, for Hobie Verholst. And the intermediary has got his fee of 24k locked in, but I have no hesitation in accepting that. The host has said he's willing to talk to a different club as well, which if you do, mate, that's fantastic. But I will offer you out for 1.2 again and see if anyone else bites. But there, the intermediary has done his job. S is for staff, and the button down on the left-hand side that says staff gives you a list of all the people in the club, both first team, second team, youth teams, yeah, again, these are all down the bottom corner here to show you how many of your squad slots have been used when it comes to staff. So you'll have to get used to this screen as you go along. Again, the responsibilities lives in this section. If you want to find a new staff member, your search functions are in here. Again, they are all reasonably self-explanatory. So if you want to find a assistant manager, for example, you click pick attributes, highlight key attributes for assistant manager, choose it down to a level that suits your club so there are little buttons here where you can increase and decrease them as you go along so if you want the best of the best you're going to get 14s across the board for these two guys however just tinker and learn as you go along the best thing to do is just you know learn as you play again you can tend you can farm this out to your director of football or your technical director and leave the staff to them but Often the development of your youth players and the quality of you know, development of your players is determined heavily by the staff members and you probably want to have at least a little bit of involvement in there. What you'll also find in the job section is the job centre. So if I narrow this down to managers because you're not allowed to have jobs that are not managers in FM, apologies, you can see the four clubs, I say clubs, the four teams, so we have two clubs and two nations where jobs are available. So again, you can click on the button, or click on the team for information and you can apply. What you can also do is look in the job security section to see what jobs are potentially going to come available. Now at the moment, apart from the four that are available, every job is stable. However, that can always change as the teams go on bad runs, you'll start seeing little bits of information that they're going to get sacked and you can look to move yourself up, you know. T is for team dynamics, which is an often overlooked part of the game. Some people say that it doesn't actually matter and others still say that it's vital. I think I'm in the middle again, where it isn't as critical as tactics or personnel, but it is quite important for morale to be high to get good performances out of your players and it's very important for development because happy players will tend to develop better. So on this home screen you can see your team's cohesion which is how familiar they are with each other and the tactic, the atmosphere which is the happiness and the managerial spot which is you know how much they believe in you. So you want this to be sky high really. The hierarchy lets you see which players are really influential and which are not. This is important because the more influential they are, 
the more they have an ability to change players' opinions and maybe get them to your side. Social groups mean you can see who is friends with who effectively. And this helps again when asking players about you know promises or picking up abilities or if they want to leave, you'll ask a friend to tell them not to essentially. And then this screen, which I've used quite a lot in recent years, looks at you know reasons for players to be happy or unhappy. Now at the moment, everyone's basically delighted or very happy because it's the early part of the season. As you go along, some people may get unhappy about certain things. In the club section, if they're looking for a new contract, they will come up with a little red bar saying dissatisfied. If you've annoyed them, the management one or the treatment one may go red. If they're not getting enough playing time, the playing time one will go red. And then in training, if you've got them set to a training regime that they just don't like or they think is pointless, they will tell you. But if you come to this page first, you can potentially nip it in the bud before it becomes an item where you have to make a promise. And if you have to make a promise, there's a chance you're going to annoy the player so much that they want to leave. And when they do that, you often get a lot less money than if you sell them properly or you get a lot less value than actually keeping them around. So it's quite important to at least try and keep on top of this. And you know, if they're not getting the playing time, maybe loan them out, for example. You, I've called user interface, but by that, I mean the skin. Now, if you want to skin your game, there is a button here under preferences, which is skin. The skin that I use is SAS24, which is absolutely amazing and has so much customization available. SAS skins have been used by Matt Second Yellow Card for a good while now, and he's been taking suggestions from users in Second Yellow Card's Discord and on streams. And even a little content creator called Iron Owl managed to get his own scouting view into the game as part of his skin which is absolutely unreal for someone like me that you know a skinner gets involved in that sort of thing and that my video had that much of an effect but it's what people wanted and i'm not going to argue with that but saz is absolutely fantastic and if you have any issues with the skin second yellow cards discord has its own channel for things to either request or ask about um the link will be in my description below and I highly advise you check that out. Obviously, there are many skins out there on Steam, on websites, and for other content creators. And it's sometimes just a case of try before you go. They should all be free. So don't worry about thinking this is an additional extra to get an Insta skip button. These are all free add-ons. Sometimes people ask for a little donation, you know, a cup of coffee, if that but most of the time they're just freely available to download and they make your life so much easier. For example, if I was to pick a player, so let's just go Bruno Martins Indy for a minute, we now have all these little buttons here that weren't available before, so we can go through training and information, etc. As you go through the game, the data hub opens up, which again is something I haven't talked about, but the reason I haven't is because we're not three games into the save yet and i can't the data hub is something that i tend not to get too involved with however a lot of other people rave by it it depends whether you're an analytics person or a opinions person essentially i go more by opinions but the data hub allows you a lot of stats however the data that comes out of that SAS is actually able to use to put into things such as player um you know statistics tabs analysis tabs and some of the data that he's able to mine, and then the customization that you can choose what data it shows you on what screen, it's just outstanding. You'll also note on the tactics screen how the feet strength is also shown on here. A lot of what Sans has done is make things instantly visible on one screen rather than having to click away and back, away and back. If I was to pick a player, let's pick someone with an expiring contract who we do want to keep around. So let's go for Iman Griffith, who's on loan at the moment. Let's just discuss a new contract with his agent quickly and then offer a contract. You'll have this little tab on the right-hand side which shows his footedness, his injury history, his pros and cons, and any second nationalities, which is important when you're offering contracts. So again, I'm just gonna have a quick go through here lovely stuff again there will be advice on how to do contracts in a future transfers video as well but all in all the sad skin is i can't recommend it highly enough v is for views 
And to be honest, I'd love to have a load more of them in this year's game cycle. It was great to develop as a content creator in FM23, and any more likes and subscribes I can get this year would be absolutely lovely. There's more tutorials and experiments coming up this year, but as I've said in many of my previous videos, every little helps when it comes to content creation, and you know the views have been absolutely amazing on some of the later tutorial videos I did in 23. So hopefully. I can provide more reason for you to view and share in FN24. However, when I said views, that wasn't what I meant. What I'm on about is the views here. So I have my own set of views that I tend to use for the game, which are based on you know their contracts, their homegrown status for when I've got European competitions, so it can tell me what's coming up. A transfer one, which will tell me about what status they are at, whether they have a loan and whether that's due to expire, whether they are transfer listed or loan listed, for example. Um, I've got one just for set piece traits so that I can see which players I should be using in set pieces. Uh, and I have my little general view, which I like to use just to get a rounded view of the squad, understand expiry days. It's basically so that I can filter stuff as quick as possible. Um, I've also shown you as well, and I'm going to show it again because I absolutely love the fact that INR scouting is its own thing. Show me I haven't got a shortlist to be able to show you what the view looks like. However, views are available through a bunch of sources. Matt has his own download pack. I'm going to hopefully be creating my own download pack soon. Um, but you'll also be able to download them and install them from my W, which is the workshop. So for this, I've come to the Steam page for FM23 because FM24 will not have the workshop available until the full game releases on November 6th. However, if you open up where the game lives on Steam, you'll see a button here called Workshop. And this will take you to a community page which allows you to download a bunch of stuff from new league databases so you can add other leagues into the game you've got tactics you've got tactical styles you've got set piece regimes you've got match plans and oh, skins are available here as well and a whole host of other features just available to download for free that this is what other users what other content creators what other players of the game have just uploaded in order to make it a more complete and you know, adapted game to what you like. All of these tend to be created using the pre-game editor and then uploaded as their database file. And when you hit download, so if I click this Maltese database by Riddler, who often will make new databases based on leagues that aren't automatically switched on in the game, which is great to be able to add it, you just hit the subscribe button. And then when you next load it up, that advanced settings thing I showed you at the very beginning, you can click a button in the top right corner and you can actually add, you know, editor data into the game, which is what I'll be doing a lot of the time when creating my custom databases for the rather crazy experiments that I like to do. X is for Xbox and PlayStation. Since the game has been developing and frankly getting to a wider audience at a rapid rate, the addition to the Xbox and PlayStation consoles has brought an awful lot of players to the game. And it's available there this year, as well as the mobile version, behind, I believe, on Netflix games, whatever that is. Um, I concentrate solely on the PC version because I think it's the most complete and filled and the most editable with the pre-game editor. I'm not quite sure how deep it goes on the console versions, but if you don't want to use your PC or you would like to just have the experience on your console, now that consoles are more powerful, that option is there for you. And why is your turn? So nearly at the end of this A to Z now, and now it's your turn. Go create a game, go play your way, your style, your rules, however you want to. Create a new save. There's an excellent service online called Perchance. Again, I'll leave a link in the description down below if you don't know what save you want to do, but you want a challenge. Alternatively, if you're a newcomer, the best thing to do is just pick a team that you know, ideally your favorite team, or at least a team that you're aware of, just to learn the ropes so that you at least kind of have an idea of how good your players are. Alternatively, if you've got an FN23 save, you can just port it in and carry on. The opportunities are endless, but 
Again, play the game however you want. If you want to have as little staff interaction as possible and go proper hardcore into the game, then feel free. If you want to have a light touch and have the staff do a lot of the work for you, feel free. If you want to save scum your way to a Champions League with a minnow team, feel free. Use the editor, whatever you want. It's your game, it's your time, it's your rules. But all in all, have fun because it is a fantastic game to be able to work on. It's great for creating content and coming up with some absolutely mad experiments, which I'm looking forward to doing this year, along with a lot of tutorials, because frankly, you've been loving those last year, and I intend to hopefully help an awful lot more people. Which finally leads me to Z. And because Z was always going to be tricky, I went for the first Z that comes to mind when you mention Football Manager, which is Zealand, who is probably one of the top, if not the top, content creator in the space. You'll even see him on my left hand side here because I subscribe to him like millions of other people. But there's an awful lot of really good content creators out there. Just to name a few, Work the Space, the Lujo, Tom FM, who got me into FM, let's be honest, Amiga Luke, Clates, RDF, and of course, I've mentioned him a few times, my good friend Second Yellow Card, who is a lot of the reason why I have got into content creation and it's just an awful lot of fun to be around. But go check all their stuff out, go and support every other content creator in the space. We're not really a particularly selfish bunch, we like to help each other where we can. And it's a thriving space that keeps developing and keeps improving. Matt's got to 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. I've got to 255, and I'm immensely proud of that. Only 750 more, and YouTube might even pay me a couple of pence to do this. But yeah, you can find me on YouTube, on Instagram, on X, used to be Twitter, on Twitch technically, but usually in Max streams. I will one day hopefully create a tip Twitch channel, but for now, that's kind of a distant pipe dream. I need kids to grow up first. Um, you can also find me on Second Yellow Cow's Discord. I do have my own one that I'm hoping to develop a bit more this year. Um, I have a TikTok amongst many other things. How often I post them very much varies dependent on life. However, it's fantastic for a brand new game, a lot more enthusiasm, hopefully help a few more people to enjoy the game even more. But for now, thanks everybody for watching this video. Full game comes out on November the 6th. If you want a discount code to get it for £35.5p from an authorised Sega retailer, then there is a code, again, from Second Yellow Card that, again, I will try and put in my description below so that you can purchase the game with that discount and should give you immediate access to the early access. Nearly said B to that. But there we are, an A to Z guide to FM24. I'm off to go and enjoy this early access save with AZ now and see how far I can get them in their Eredivisie. And it's time for you to go and enjoy your early access save and see how far you can get your team. But for now, thank you again very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you have enjoyed it. Look forward to some tutorials and experiments coming up on the channel. But for now, thanks for watching and I will see you again soon.